Greetings folks, in this video I'm going to be having a look at the Ellie Goo Neptune 4 Plus medium sized 3D printer. It's relatively budget priced. I've been used to using the Creality Ender 3 for the last four years or so. Uh, that's a, a real budget price printer and smaller as well. Um, so when Ellie Goo approached me and said would I like to have a look at uh, the Neptune 4 Plus, I thought oh yeah, excellent. Um, things would have changed over those last four or five years, so be very interested to see uh, how they've changed. Some of the immediate differences are the operating pad here, touchscreen operating pad, uh, that just magnet sits onto there. We also have uh, Wi-Fi and LAN as well as USB uh, file transfer. We have dual drive for the print gantry there, and we have bracing rods as well. We have a filament detector and direct drive extruder. So they're all things that I haven't played with before. So it'll be interesting to have a look at them. It also has a 500 millimeters per second print speed, maximum print speed, which is a lot faster than what I'm used to. Can operate in silent mode or, or uh, normal or sport mode, they call it. Um, so we'll check those things out. I've got it turned on at the moment. There's a little bit of fan noise there. I'll turn it off just so we can see the difference. That's no fan noise now. It does have a big fan system up, up here, which is quite noisy. Uh, if you're going to be printing at the full speed, then you probably do need the, the full cooling. Assembly was very easy and very enjoyable experience, actually. I really enjoyed building it because, uh, as we'll see in the assembly photos that I took and the unboxing photos, uh, everything is very, very clearly labelled. The base is all pre-assembled. You really just have to bolt the, the top section on and plug things in and uh, bolt the print head on. But let's go over to the Elegoo website and we'll check out some of the specs and the price and those sorts of things and where it fits in the uh, Neptune 4 range. Here's our Neptune 4 Plus. Let's have a look at that. Uh, so there's, there's the US dollars price, just under 270 And... Uh, Print volume 320 by 320 by 385. Uh, maximum printing speed 500 millimeters per second, which is way faster than my old Creality Ender. Auto bed leveling up to 300 degree nozzle temperature. Uh, works with PLA, TPU, PETG, ABS, ASA, nylon filaments. And can use Wi-Fi, LAN or USB for file transfer. So let's have a look at the other ones. The Neptune 4 is the smaller one, roughly the same size as my old Creality. There's a pro version of that. And we've got the Plus, but there's also the Max as well, which is the biggest one, 420 by 420 by 480. That is a big printer. But we have the Neptune 4 Plus. Dual gear direct extruder. I haven't had a direct extruder before, so that'll be interesting. As I said, le uh, auto bed leveling, clipper, high speed motherboard. I don't even know what clipper is, but that's the firmware apparently. Pre installed clipper firmware. And all the components that come in the box. So let's have a look at my unboxing photos. There's the box, quite a big box, and it's about 14, 15 kilograms or something, so it's not a, not a lightweight. Nicely packed with uh, high, surrounded by high density EPP. A uh, little user manual there and how to do uh, bed leveling, I think that is. And this is the one that comes with the one kilogram of PLA. And there's two layers we've got the sort of the top frame in the top layer and the mostly assembled bed in the bottom layer. Here are all the bits laid out. And uh, we've got the spool holder there, the, the print head, the control panel and the control panel holder. Um, you can choose the power plug that it came with, and mine came with an Australian power plug, which is really good. The cooling fan there that gets, that's bolt onto the top gantry. And just following the manual to put it together, the assembly was wonderful. I really enjoyed it because all the little baggies of bolts and pieces are clearly labelled, clearly referred to in the manual and uh, good illustrations as well. Oh, there's one thing in the manual, they say bolt the, the head on with two bolts, but uh, as you can see there's three bolt holes there and there are three bolts to use in there, so it's actually three. And yeah, all the tools are provided. This is bolting the top frame onto the bottom and the control panel holder, plugging the control panel into the front. 
the little Wi-Fi antenna and it did pick up my Wi-Fi very easily even though I'm out the back in a little shed and plugging in cables this is the main printhead cable going in the top with a couple of clips to hold it in and the spool holder and the filament detector there and the bracing rods it does need bracing because it's a big printer and plugging in the cables is very easy because there's only one place they can plug into at, at each spot really can't make a mistake there that's putting the cooling fan on the uh, print gantry plugging in the relevant cables more cables and that's pretty much it for assembly all right so let's have a closer look at some of the features there's the control panel that's magnetized and just sits on the top of the holder there there's the little Wi-Fi and LAN connections and if we go around the back you can see the bracing bars there and the dual uh, stepper motors for the Z-axis big cooling fan system there there's the filament detector on the spool holder there and the cabling down this side you can select your power input there I'm using 230 and the big magnetized print surface all right, time to turn it on and see what happens. They do provide a USB stick here with some uh, software, uh, the Cura software, uh, assembly video, and some models to play with. So we'll plug that in and uh, print a model. We'll turn it on. You can see there's an LED light up under the gantry there for getting a good view of what you're doing. And the screen's lighting up. Just let it start up and do its thing. Very conveniently the, uh, the pad can come off in your hand. System is currently starting. Please wait. All right, so we have print, prepare, settings and level, and it gives us the current positions and temperatures. Let's have a look at the print. Uh, so we've got the, oh, it's going through the uh, USB stick menu there. We should have, there we've got some G codes there we can print. These came on the USB stick. Uh, prepare, we can move the head up and down. Z, X and Y axis in 0 0.11 and 10 millimeter steps and we can uh, adjust the temperature of the head uh, and select different filaments there and the extruder you can set or check the extr extruder temperatures load and unload the filament Got settings here what's the other one level so this is where we do the auto automatic bed leveling. Uh, that's all been done and yeah, it's pretty easy. All you do is uh, a basic manual level first using uh, a piece of paper and the dials underneath here and you move it around uh, just until you get a bit of friction on the paper. Do that all manually first and then uh, you do the automatic leveling, the final Z axis adjustment. Uh, I won't show you that, There's, uh, it's very well covered in the videos, but we'll cancel out of that. Settings, different languages. This is the LAN and it'll pick up uh, nearby Wi-Fi networks. Light control, you can turn the headlight on and off again. Observation light, I don't know what that is. Oh, there's, there's a, a light under the, the print head there. There you go. Uh, fan control. That's the main fan coming on full bore. Turn the motor off, filament detector on and off. Factory settings, if you mess things up, you can go back to the factory settings about the machine. Neptune 4 Plus, there's the print size. Firmware version 1.2.3.1 at this stage. Uh, user interface version 1.2.14. All very good. And advanced settings, you can change the backlight level. Uh, key sounds, power loss recovery, input shaper, I don't really know what that is. These are things I'll have to work out. Nozzle P 
speed to calibration, so that's calibration the temperatures, temperature settings, you can preset the temperatures for all your different filaments. Print mode, if we've got silent, normal and sport, we'll leave it on normal for the moment. And the level mode, you've got choice of two different level modes. All very good, so we're actually ready to print now, I think, so we might as well choose a file. Let's do the Buddha. Uh, I don't have any filament loaded yet, so I'll put some filament in and we will continue on. It's pretty cool, it gives a preview of the, the model and the print time, 40 minutes. Confirm. So that is printing way faster than my little <laughs> ender. This is amazing. Yeah, it looks cool. Printed a little line here first to uh, charge the extruder, I guess. And we've got the details coming up on the screen here. 2%. Temperatures. Print speed. This is very cool. Fan is started up. Let's go in a bit closer. You can probably see my table isn't really stable enough. I'm going to have to brace the table to uh, make sure I get nice, smooth, larger prints. But we'll do that in the future. We'll just uh, demonstrate it working straight out of the box in this video. So here's our little Buddha, he looks pretty good. I can pull the magnetic print surface off and it just pops off nicely. Print quality is absolutely fine, that's looking good, even with a wobbly table. All right, so there you go, it works perfectly out of the box. Uh, of course, uh, it's one thing printing pre-prepared models from the USB drive, but uh, I need to print something, I need to print something practical. Uh, a nose cone for one of my planes, so I've got the file prepared and I'm going to print it in ultra fast mode on the Elegoo uh, and comparing the print time to what it would be on the Ender which is over three hours worth uh, this is going to be around about 38 minutes I think so let's see how this goes uh, it may be uh, difficult with a wobbly table and going full speed but I've got to test these things so let's print a nose cone now for my Talon GT. So I'm putting my own USB drive in there and we'll pick up the files. 
tell them nose cone, small, G code, confirm. And once again, we'll just let it do its stuff. Uh, and this will be interesting to see how it goes printing flat out. So that was very impressive, very, very fast. And the quality, a little bit of stringing inside. There's a tree, support tree there. Uh, but that is, <laughs> that is perfectly usable nose cane. Incredible, in about 38, 40 minutes. Great stuff. That is so much faster than my old Ender. Printers have come a long way since then. So that would be good for a, a quick draft print, but even so, uh, reasonably good, good quality as well. There's one more thing I'm going to print, which is a little mount for a, um, an FPV camera. And I'll do that on silent mode, if I can work that out, just to see the difference. Tricky getting this magnetized plate back on, there we go. So I've switched the fan off and I've selected silent mode, but uh, there's still the internal fan going there um, you would never be able to turn that off totally i would think so uh, i'm assuming that's going to just keep going for silent mode you turn the fan off up the top here and select silent mode in the settings so that might be as silent as it's going to get but anyway we'll see how this one turns out it's printing absolutely perfectly at the moment no dramas at all So there we have the LEU Neptune 4 Plus medium sized printer. It is working absolutely perfectly at the moment. Printers have come a long way in the last four years since my original uh, Ender 3. Uh, the software is a lot more sophisticated. The construction and the features are uh, much better. And uh, the print size is a lot bigger on this one as well. And, and it's already proved useful for my model planes. That'll do it for this video, but uh, I'll keep playing with it and I'll come back with a follow-up video in the next couple of weeks or so. I'll do some bigger prints to make use of the, the uh, larger print volume. And it may even be good for printing uh, full 3D printed planes. Not that I'm really into those sort of planes, but uh, it might be a good choice for that sort of application. But works perfectly well for the small uh, bits and pieces that I use it for. Uh, I wouldn't call myself a 3D printer expert, but I definitely use them um, very often for my model planes, uh, and they're very, very useful. So, Elegu Neptune 4 Plus, not a bad printer. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.